Why are more and more architects including greenery into their building designs? Is it for the aesthetic value? Do green buildings look nicer? Do they perform better? Do they sell for more money? My name's Kyle, I'm an architecture student moving into my fifth and final year of architecture school and one of my research focuses has been on sustainability, in particular vegetation or greenery inside of buildings and the benefits and importance of designing green buildings. First of all, not only is including greenery into buildings a good idea, but it's actually essential for all forms of life on earth, including humanity. Now here's why. In Australia and all parts of the world, we generate on average one tonne of solid waste per person per year, which goes to landfill. Construction and demolition of buildings contributes to up to 40% of this. So Kyle, why is this bad? What does this mean? Landfill disposal includes land that could be used for other things such as forests. So it's taking away from the space of the earth and as we all know with the growing population that space on land is becoming a finite resource. It is a finite resource. The next thing is that landfill generates methane which is 10 times worse than carbon dioxide in terms of global warming. In fact, methane from landfill is one of the main contributors to global warming as well as the carbon dioxide generated and the carbon monoxide generated from the internal combustion engines used to transport the waste outside of the cities to these landfill dumping grounds. There is also a depletion of natural resources, a waste of energy, and the list just goes on and on and on. But let's focus on one thing at a time. Global warming is one of the biggest threats to life on Earth at the moment. NASA says, the current warming trend is of particular significance because it is unequivocally the result of human activity since the mid 20th century and proceeding at a rate that is unprecedented over millennia. It is undeniable that human activities have warmed the atmosphere, ocean and land and that widespread and rapid changes in the atmosphere, ocean, cryosphere and biosphere have occurred. Now I'm not a doomsayer, I'm not saying this is the end of the world, I think that if we keep up what we're doing I think we're on the right track. So anyways, anyways, back to architecture. How the hell is your pot plant in your bedroom going to save the world? Plants and trees convert carbon dioxide into oxygen, essentially cleaning the air around it. Greenery in buildings offsets the carbon dioxide emissions created through construction or de demolition of that building, as well as the transport needed to get all of the construction materials onto that site. You've probably heard the importance of having a carbon neutral construction build because there is just so much energy and so many carbon dioxide emissions that come from constructing a building that if you're not offsetting those emissions somehow, then you're destroying the earth. So what's happening is the population is rising and because there's more people, we need more buildings. And because we need more buildings, we're clearing more land and getting rid of more forests and greenery to be able to house and locate those people. As the population rises, which it is doing very quickly at the moment, then more trees are removed because there are more people, more carbon dioxide is being emitted and the temperature of the earth goes up and up and up. And because there's less trees, it means that there's less plants to convert that carbon dioxide into oxygen, which even more is increasingly exponentially destroying the earth. By designing greenery into buildings, you're essentially replacing that greenery that you took away from that habitat. And while we're talking about habitats, when you clear land to construct a building, you're taking away the habitat of insects and birds and animals that used to live there. The greenery in buildings helps replace that biodiversity you took away and gives those things a habitat to live at. Because if that home for the birds and the insects don't get replaced, then they'll go extinct. And we all know what happens when the bees go extinct. As Britannica states, major rippling effects throughout ecosystems. It has a rippling effect that will ultimately affect humanity and the food we eat, and we will probably go extinct as well if the bees die out. Now that we know about the importance of greenery in terms of the earth, how about in the terms of a building's performance aesthetic and cost. Firstly, let's talk about performance. Greenery offers many, many different benefits for the performance of a building. It is a great insulator, hence why green walls and green roofs are gaining popularity with architects and the population in general. People love green walls and roofs. Insulation dictates a building's ability to control temperature and humidity. Heat is gained and lost through a building's envelope. The better that it's insulated, 
then the less heat is lost or gained. So if it's really, really hot outside, like it is at the moment, a well insulated building will remain relatively cool, except this building is not well insulated and I'm kind of dying right now and I'm a bit sweaty. On the flip side, if it's really cold outside, say you're in Norway somewhere in the middle of winter or something, a well insulated house is going to keep you relatively warm. It's going to trap that heat inside the building. Adding a green wall to a building adds an extra layer to that wall and the soil itself and the greenery itself is a really great insulator. Additionally, it keeps the sun out, which is one of the biggest problems in new builds. You'll see buildings that have really large windows and shitty little thin walls with no insulation in them. But the biggest problem is, is the direct sunlight during the warmer months is heating up that space tremendously because there is no shading on it. Instead, the green wall receives all of that sunlight and acts as a barrier to letting that sunlight inside the building. Now, there are times where you do want direct sunlight inside a building. A green wall is just another tool you have, a new technique you have to control what you want shaded and what you want open and having direct sunlight. Now, a green roof is even better in performance because you think hot air rises. And so the roof of a building is often the hottest part of the building and where most of the heat is lost or gained. Now imagine insulating your roof with a 400 millimeter thick vegetation patch or a green roof, then that's just a whole thick layer of insulation and no sun's gonna get through that. It's gonna keep your building way more controlled. You're gonna have control over the temperature of it. And ultimately having a more insulated building means less money spent on air conditioning and heating, which is also better for the environment. It also keeps the sunlight off of the building's roof which is one of the biggest contributors to something called the heat island or the urban heat island effect, which is essentially where in a city, you've got all of these buildings, these tall skyscrapers with no greenery around it, and they've all got these black roofs. Well, the thing is, they're gonna be soaking in all of this heat and so they actually trap that heat in the city and you'll actually find that it's always warmer in the cities because of this trapping heat effect. San Francisco is going to be two or three degrees warmer than some of the you know suburbs outside of it. If all the buildings inside a city had green roofs, then this wouldn't be an issue. Greenery actually helps cool down spaces as well, which is another cool uh, feature of greenery in buildings. So greenery offers great insulation, shading, it hosts biodiversity, it cleans the air, and it looks beautiful. And that's the next thing. You hire an architect or an architect usually gets hired to design a building that is beautiful. And who doesn't love nature? Who doesn't love greenery? You know, it looks awesome. And with all of these added benefits and performance and cost and aesthetic values that it provides, that's why more and more architects are starting to use it. And I could probably go on and on and on about this topic of green buildings. And if you do want to know about something in particular, maybe you want to learn more about green roofs or green walls, let me know down in the comments because I can do a separate video on that. But I'm going to leave this one here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.